on uh, and record this. And uh, the teaching uh, that I want to share today that, that's on my heart is something I teach to all of the leadership groups uh, in an understanding. It's a kingdom doctrine that the Apostle Paul shared and taught to the churches, especially the Gentiles, about how the renewed mind in the leader operates. And Paul has given us some great revelation concerning the church. He is possibly and arguably the apostle with the most revelation for uh, the church today. So uh, I want to share with you uh, some, some of the thoughts that I have from a teaching called the resurrected mind. The resurrected mind. Now, know that the Lord Jesus Christ, he, he died, he was buried, he was resurrected, and he has ascended. We need the knowledge of the ascended Christ. But what's interesting about the resurrected man is that Jesus is not the only one that got up. We also got up with him. We resurrected. The Bible says, if you be risen in Christ. So it says that you will reign with him. So when we look at this, when we got up, and we were born again of the spirit. And especially as we matured in the things of Christ, where Paul says in Romans 12, one and two, I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right, so that you might, that, 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 that the mind might be renewed. Now, uh, there's a passage of scripture that Jesus shares with the apostles or the disciples at that time. In Matthew chapter 13, he says, uh, to you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Listen to that. To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. What is he saying? that when you start to pray and agree with the scripture where it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God in his righteousness, then all these things will be added unto you. Well, he's letting you know it's already been granted to you to be able to receive that. Now in the first Corinthians chapter four and one, it says, let a man regard us in this manner as servants of Christ, and then it says stewards of the mysteries of God. So we need to know the mysteries of the kingdom, number one, and number two, it says we are the stewards of these mysteries, right? So we need to understand that. We're stewards of unfolded things, things that have been hidden things that are hard to understand. Well, the word of God says that we're the stewards of those things and that we are the stewards of the mysteries. The kingdom is, is full of mysteries, right? That only the person with the renewed mind can understand. It is not religion. It is not tradition. And it's, it is not what men have taught us. 
but the spirit of God has taught us. And I'm going to prove that by the scripture, because as leaders, we need to know how to walk in the mysteries of the kingdom, right? It says in Ephesians 1, 17, when the Lord Jesus, when Paul was praying, Paul said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, listen to what he prayed, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So if you're taking a note, revelation is a spirit. Revelation is a spirit. And it is in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So now that revelation of it is a spirit, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. It says, but just as it is written, things which I has not seen, nor ear has not heard, and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him, for to us, God reveals them through the spirit. Remember, listen, God is going to reveal the things that our eyes have not seen and our ears have not heard and neither has entered into our hearts. So he says, I'm going to reveal that to you through the spirit, through the spirit. That's why we need to have intimacy with God. All leaders must spend intimate time with the Father. You have to have a hiding place and a secret place in him. Can y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. So it is important that we come to that understanding on this morning, 1 Corinthians 14, 6, Listen to this critical statement that Paul is going to make. He says, now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall it profit you except I shall speak to you, listen to this, either by, and he says four things. Number one, revelation. Number two, or by knowledge. Number three, or by prophesying. And number four, or by doctrine. So no matter, there's four ways that the Spirit of God releases things to the body. Number one is revelation. Number one is revelation, especially apostolic and prophetic people. Especially apostles and prophets they flow by revelation knowledge, by they speak mysteries, they speak the deep things of God, and they come through their fellowshipping with the Holy Ghost. That's one of the true signature things of a true apostle or prophet is they come up by revelation. They flow in revelation of the scriptures. They expand upon the scriptures. They give us a deeper understanding of what that is. All right? So uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1, Paul makes this statement. He says, boasting is necessary, though it is not profitable. But he says, I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. Look at what Paul is saying. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. Second Corinthians 12 and 7 says, he says, uh, unless I should be exalted above measure through the above. Abundance of the revelations. He said, so Paul had an abundance of revelations. Why? I trace that all the way back to 1 Corinthians 14, where through his exercise 
of speaking in tongues more than us all. Paul said, I would pray that you all speak with tongues. And in another place in 1 Corinthians 14, he says, I thank my God that I pray in tongues more than ye all. So the spirit of revelation is attached to praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit, which brings you into the deeper things in the mind of God. You're not just preaching Logos and teaching Logos anymore, but you're now starting to preach through revelations of God. Thank you, Lord. Revelations, rhema, rhema, that active in living word of God is what rhema is. Rhema is where God is going. Logos is where God has been. Logos is where God has been. Rhema is where God is going. The spirit of revelation is where God is going. The spirit of mysteries is unfolding where God is going. Can y'all hear what I'm saying? This is critical. We come up uh, with a different breed of people. We're a different breed. We come up by the spirit of revelation, Right? In Galatians chapter 1, 11 and 12, look at what Paul, Paul, Paul says. He says, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Listen to this. It says, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. I need to read that again so that y'all could see this foundational scripture of how Paul flowed in the spirit, how Paul received things. It says, but he says, this gospel was, that was preached of me is not after man. Number two. For I neither received it of man. Number three, neither was I taught it. I didn't sit in classes about this. He says, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So again, the spirit of, the re of revelation is at work in us and we are to expect it. And that should be the norm of apostolic and prophetic teaching. Galatians chapter 1, 13 through 16, if you're writing those things down, in verse 15, it says, But when God, who had set me apart even from my mother's womb and called me <laughs> through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the Gentiles. And then he says, I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood. Can y'all see this stuff? Can y'all see this? This we we don't flow, brothers, uh, from you know the natural mind. We don't flow necessarily from sitting in school settings or even under good preaching, which could be very inspirational. But through intimacy with Him, He is revealing things to us through the. Spirit spirit of revelation. So you're going to, in other words, we're going to start to speak some things we have never even heard before. We won't be repeating things that the last generation said, but in present truth, God is going to unveil some things to us through the scriptures that have never been seen before, because the spirit of revelation is coming to give us a deeper interpretation of the word of God. Can y'all hear what I'm saying? All right. So Ephesians chapter three, look at this. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter three. Excuse me, my throat has been a little scratchy lately. It says, for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me 
to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Did y'all, have y'all ever read this stuff before? Isn't it amazing? Look at how clear and how many times this phrase pops up in the scripture about how he received things by revelation. Look at verse four. He says, whereby when ye read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, verse five, which in other ages, listen to this, was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now, listen to this, revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets, how? By the spirit. Do y'all see this stuff? This is amazing. It's letting us know that the New Testament preachers, especially apostles and prophets, flow in the spirit of revelation. We flow in the spirit of revelation. We need to receive that right now in the name of Jesus. There are going to be things that I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has even entered into our hearts the things that are prepared for us that love him, and then he says, but he reveals it by his spirit, right? First John 2 and 20, you might know this. It says, but you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Uh, I'll read that one more time. For you have an unction or an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. You got to start to make a declaration. Father, I thank you that I know all things through your spirit. I thank you, Father, that I'm the, by the unction of the Holy Spirit, I know all things. So you see, now you got to start to live by faith and start to speak these kinds of things over your life. Because most men would say, ah, nonsense. You can't know everything. Oh, I don't know anything. But through the unction of the Holy Spirit, I have the mind of Christ. Through the unction of the Holy Spirit, I know all things. Now, you can't tell that to everybody because folk might say, oh, you're crazy. But the scripture declares, now to back it up, look at 1 John 1, 27. Just a few verses down, it says, but the anointing which ye have received of him abided in you. And ye need not that any man would teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and that anointing, that Holy Spirit, is truth, and is no lie, and even as it had taught you, ye shall abide in him. So he's letting you know that the Holy Spirit is teaching you. And when the Holy Spirit is teaching you, it comes up by revelation. Is revelation is things that have not been unfolded to men. And in each generation, we are responsible to search out the matters that the king has spoken. And he reveals those timely things to us, his sons, to understand what God is doing in a generation, what God is doing in a nation, what God is doing through a people. He's calling us to a higher standard of revelation, and it is through, yes, uh, prophetic ministry, the prophet's ministry, the spirit of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. All of these are flowing, these gifts of speaking, these gifts of declaring, the talking gifts are manifesting so that we might have revelation of the mind and the will of God. Can y'all hear what I'm saying? So you have an unction. Can I read it again? First John 2.20. Look at that thing again. But you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. 
Then you add uh, verse 27, and it says, but the anointing which you have received, you've already received it, it says, of him, which is Christ, it lives in you. And you need not that any man teach you. Now, he's not saying that a man can't teach you. He's letting you know in the name of Jesus that there are men that carry the spirit of wisdom and revelation. They can teach you. It says, but as the same anointing teaching you, listen, it's telling you that the anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie, and even it, as it had taught you. Somebody should say, the anointing has taught me. Somebody should say, the anointing has taught me, right? Uh, you shall abide or stand or live in him, that word abide. So this is for the body of Christ. This is for his leaders. The fullness will be realized when we come into an order that I'm going to talk about perhaps later of Melchizedek. But hear me, sons and daughters, friends, family, we need to open up ourselves for the spirit of revelation to arise. Not that we go and try to find books and programs and watch stuff on YouTube and stuff, you know, on television, tele-evangelists to try to find the word. No, the unction lives inside of you. The problem that we have is that we don't make enough time for that to manifest and to operate in us. We need prayer closets. We need intimate places where we could be set apart fasting and praying and getting a download from the Spirit of God. For the scripture says in 1 Corinthians as well that we have the mind of Christ. You get the mind of Christ through fellowshipping with him. Quite simply, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing difficult nor deep about what I've said. I'm even giving you the key to unlock the spirit of revelation by you going in and setting yourself apart to spend time with the anointed one. When you set that time aside, ladies and gentlemen, he will develop himself in you. And even through that, he'll manifest through you what five Old gifting you are, whether you're an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher, through fellowshipping with the anointed one, and the way that he releases things through you will be identified by men and confirmed by men that you are a prophet, that you are an apostle, that you are an evangelist, pastor, or teacher. So it is critical, ladies and gentlemen, that the spirit of revelation will come alive in you as you set yourself apart, as you take the time out, as you get before the Lord and worship him, and love on him, that you get his heart, that you get his mind. And when you open up your mouth, you will re release the spirit of revelation. You will release what God is presently saying. You will unfold mysteries, things that are difficult to understand. The spirit of revelation will cause you to release it and simplify it. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, revelation unfolds things that have been hidden. Revelation simplifies dark sayings, things hard to be understood. Revelation will release that and make it simple. Whenever we sit before men that are uh, impossible to understand, that does not make them deep and that does not cause them to be called 
revelators. A revelator is one that will make the word of God easy to understand. It will simplify what is deep. It will give us the mind of Christ. And even though those things are very deep, ladies and gentlemen, you will be able to bring understanding to the body. You will be able to reveal that, unfold that mystery, uncover that thing that has been hidden by way of the spirit of revelation. So I declare to you today, ladies and gentlemen, that we come up by the spirit of revelation. I'm, I'm telling you on this day in the name of Jesus, that's the desire in the heart of God. And this is how New Testament apostles and prophets operate. So with all that being said, I'm going to stop the recording and I would love to hear what you guys have to say concerning this 